Locked and loaded, BMX has become so popular in the sea to sky, Squamish had to create a national stage to showcase it. On today's show, we've got riders from all over the United States and Canada competing today. Only a few years old and already this Squamish club is welcoming riders from across North America. Then it's not just local musicians who are making their way onto Whistler's newest radio station. It's about creative people and musicians and artists and creative entrepreneurs who are looking at a way of moving forward in their, in their career and get ready to take a walk on the art side of town. I applied through the Whistler Arts Council and they found a great match for me with Shaw Cable Systems, so I'm really excited to have my paintings on display in the office. Bold, brazen, and beautiful. The face of your community, today on The Express. Welcome to The Express on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald. The Sea to Sky Nationals, a BMX first here in the Sea to Sky. It's all thanks to a local troupe. We're going to learn more about the Squamish BMX Racing Club in just a moment. But first, what does it take to get a night owl musician like Sean Rose out of bed by 8 a.m.? Well, it starts with a tall Caesar at the Wildwood and a little side of FM radio. Is it coffee, Steve? Oh, sweet. The AM hours come early. Only this morning, it's about the FM. Radio architects Steve Clark and Adam Colpitt set up a satellite Whistler Media Network FM radio station at the Wildwood as part of the new station's launch party. Okay, that sounds good. So they'll uh, meet up with Today you. we're having a breakfast show and we're introducing some of the radio hosts that we've been working with uh, over the last two months. It's a Monday, beautiful Monday morning. I'm usually here on Thursday, but uh, we have a special, special show today, all day long. Uh, it's uh, Monday, the big show at WMM.FM. Katerina Alberti hosts the Think Like a Mountain show every Thursday at 11 a.m. on WMN-FM. It's about creative people and musicians and artists and creative entrepreneurs who are looking at a way of moving forward in their, in their career. I thought you'd go straight from Benny's act. Uh, Think Like a Mountain is one of 15 regular weekly programs. Only instead of listeners tuning in via radio, these local personalities are served sunny side up on the web at WMN.FM, garnering roughly 250 hits a day. The Mike Polly Show and The Nooner, which is on Thursday, is one of my favorites. The Tuesday Night Sex Show is always very, very hilarious. It's a great way to get the community involved. It makes for great radio. As does the constant stream of local independent music filtering over WMN-FM airwaves. It's a lot of uh, West Coast music and we're slowly uh, looking to mix in uh, Canadian content. We've received approximately 300 CDs um, from local musicians of, of uh, varying talent. Um, there's been some incredible music come in. Watching the time roll away. Live music is also being showcased at radio events, such as the gritty guitar of Sean Rose, who also co-hosts the radio hip-hop show on Friday nights. Basically, it's creating a, a forum uh, for, for people to get more exposure where they might not otherwise, and for the listeners as well to be able to hear more local talent and stuff that's not major label. We do a lot of uh, you know underground and Canadian stuff, and uh, positive, uh, uplifting hip hop. You know things that things that get me up in the morning to come to Wildwood for WMN.FM, right? Making mornings a little more palatable in the mountains. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. WMNFM is always looking for independent music. Just drop off your CD. You can visit their website for details. Before mountain biking, before free ride, and before four cross, there was BMX, an underground sport no longer. The BMX fan club is growing, especially here in Squamish. The Sea to Sky art scene is also growing, but not all local artists have a place to showcase their work. So the Whistler Arts Council found a way to sidestep around it with Art Walk. 
Painting is my best medium for expressing my thoughts. Blending her love for fashion and awareness of her energy reliance, visual artist Laura Terleski's portraits combine bold colors and faces with power cords, earbuds, and even wind generators. I do a lot of uh, sketching uh, from life drawing that, we, that I've been doing in the last little bit, uh, so I can take the forms that I've worked on and mesh them with something that I've seen. Laurel's energy-focused collection titled We Love This Stuff So Much has made its way to gallery walls in California and back again. Right now, this Squamish resident is getting set to display some of the pieces at the upcoming Art Walk in Whistler. I applied through the Whistler Arts Council and they found a great match for me with Shaw Cable System, so I'm really excited to have my paintings on display in the office. Laurel's paintings will be on display from June 20th to August 31st at the Shaw office with a opening reception on June 30th from 6.30 p.m. till 9. Art Walk is fantastic because it's a fun night out in Whistler. There's uh, people that I wouldn't necessarily meet, um, just going about things in my own way. Laurel can also be found with her brush in hand at live painting events happening throughout Art Walk's two month long exhibit. I've really enjoyed uh, live painting with acrylics uh, just because you can build up an image and work that much faster. It's just given a lot more freedom. The electrically charged collection currently sits at 17 paintings with two more pieces in development. Her next piece is embarking on a trip. The painting's destination is up to the viewer. Inspiration of thought, um, the possibility of moving forward, um, going somewhere, seeking out new things. Laurel's work is as much about the visual as the intellectual. It's about inspiring conversation or changing maybe our views on things or just being inspired. From Laurel's place of creative outlet at Homebase Studios in Squamish, I'm Jessica Turner for Shaw TV. Again, this two-month-long walking tour kicks off with a grand opening on Thursday, June 30th in Whistler Village. Admission is free. BMX racers from all across North America have come out to compete at the Sea to Sky Nationals. And there's many local riders in our midst. Today is a national series race, and there's five of these races in Canada. We were awarded one. We've got riders from all over the United States and Canada competing today. The Squamish BMX Club has about 125 racers, and today we have about 75. We've got some members of the Squamish BMX racing team here, and how did you do today? Um, I got first in my first race. Congratulations! And the 238. We were awarded an Olympic Legacy Grant through the District of Squamish and because of that we've got a brand new gate, a pro gate, um, which is what they use at the Olympics and at the World Cup level. And we also got awarded some bleachers, so we put those into place as well, which has all helped with our bid to get the race. Where are you from and who are you with? I'm from Victoria and uh, we're with Team Pro BMX uh, based in Victoria on Broughton Street and our whole team's competing here this weekend. And uh, yesterday we finished third place overall on the trophy team. Congratulations, and what do you think of the track? The track's a little, uh, it's a little on the sketchy side, but uh, the weather's been holding up pretty well, and uh, it's, it's good fun today. All you need to do to get involved with Squamish BMX is to show up on a Monday or a Thursday, and Monday nights we race, on Thursdays we practice, so you just need to bring a full face helmet, long sleeve, long pants, and any bike will do, as long as it has a working brake, and we can get you out on the track. What are you thinking about when you're racing? Um, winning. Winning, that is definitely a good thing to think about. And the 238. What do you love about BMX racing? Coming first and getting trophies. I think what's best about it in this community is it's a family sport. So um, not only can your kid compete at a level with kids that are similar to them, but the adults can compete as well. And we have teenagers and everybody else competing. So every group, every age group has somebody they compete against. So again, you can give BMX a try with the Squamish BMX Racing Club every Monday and Thursday night. You don't even need a BMX bike to start out with. A mountain bike is just fine. Stay tuned, we've got more Squamish stories coming your way. Still to come, 
A new gallery not only showcases local artists, but teaches them as well. I'm going to start off with the very basics, so that would be how you actually stretch up your paper. And this week's Big Summer pedals the two-wheeling way in Victoria. And it's a very healthy activity. I mean, you're out, you're riding a bike, uh, you're getting some fresh air. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Artina's Handcrafted Canadian Jewelry, 387 Water Street in Gastown and Government Street in Victoria. Welcome back to the Sea to Sky Nationals in Squamish. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald, and you're watching the Express. Hard, buddy, hard. As the name suggests, the Portico Gallery acts as an entranceway to local art. Not only is this new space showcasing local talent, but mentoring it as well. You can paint the leaves completely detached and that just gives a sense of air and, and energy as well that comes into it. Local artist Zoe Evamy works in watercolors, a passion the animation director will soon share in art classes at the newly opened Portico Art Gallery in Squamish. I'm going to start off with the very basics, so that would be how you actually stretch up your paper, um, uh, how the water, the different sort of wetnesses of the paper have, make different effects. Um, and really try and break down that sort of fear of using watercolour, which I think a lot of people have. Zoe is by far the most popular watercolourist that we have here in the gallery. Some are formally framed and some are casually framed, but they show off the local area and um, from our mountain ranges, the spits and everything that we have right here, our enchanted forest coves and that's what people come in here to buy. They want to see Squamish. This is really beautiful. This is actually an Ian Fry and our very first painting that we sold in the gallery within our first week. And Squamish is front and centre here at Portico, a gateway to the local artist community. There is Nancy Ricker, who's into uh, photography and represented here. There's Fran Solar. There's Linda Wagner, there's Kay Austin, there's Toby Jackson. And with our jewelry, of course, we have um, uh, Susan Remnant and Magic as well, working together and creating some very fine sterling pieces. I'm one of four co-owners here. Myself, my husband, Bill Bachman, Susan Remnant, and Magic Velenkovich. And who do we have here? This is our Wild Coyote <laughs> exhibit. Some new faces from farther afield are showcased at the gallery as well. We have some puppets that we've introduced to the gallery now, and they have been very well received from all ages. We have mice that we're featuring, and those seem to be very popular, so we'll continue with those throughout um, our next showcase as well. The gallery also plays host to art classes. Squamish photographer Nancy Ricker, whose photos you see here, will be hosting a light in line nature photography session. It's just one of many more sessions to come. Other workshops that we um, are anticipating is um, uh, Fran Solo will be doing some basket weaving. We'll have Linda Wagner doing um, acrylics and also watercolour again closer to Christmas. She's famous for her Christmas cards. To, uh, the Portico Gallery rallies creative minds together, providing a doorway to a more vibrant oh, yes. art scene yeah. through exhibit and education. We need it. I mean, we need somewhere in town to show, not only to show our work, um, but to, to meet um, and uh, share ideas. We support each other that way. We're building up the art community, what can I say? <laughs> From Squamish, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. The Portico Gallery in Squamish is open Wednesday to Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Well, the track is looking in great shape here at the Sea to Sky Nationals. Almost 140 loads of dirt was hauled here to get it ready. Next, we're going to switch gears on our bikes. This week's Big Summer takes us free riding in Victoria. Big Summer is brought to you by Caltus Lake Water Park, BC's number one water park. 
Hammer downstroke sprint, forcing the pace to the finish. Gripped with adrenaline while spinning out on the inside track. These guys spend less time talking and more time in the action. Have you ever said there's no such thing as a free ride? Well, there is now. One, two, three, and the park is officially open. Thank you very much, everybody. After nine years of planning and building in phases, the North Saanich Free Ride Park is open to the world. OK, so it did take some money to help build this community bike park, which is considered a world-class bike destination. But it's the support from the community that continues to keep this project moving onward and upward. It's, it's absolutely massive, not just for BMX, but all sorts of mountain bike, uh, dirt jumping, uh, downhillers and, and racers are using this for a training facility, as well as it's, it's a fun facility for kids of all ages. It, it is really a well-rounded park. It's not just the peninsula. We've got people coming from all over Greater Victoria, the island, and in fact, a couple weeks ago, we had some people here from California, which is not unusual. Well, I've always, I've grown up in Sydney, and uh, I love Sydney, and now uh, we get to bring our little guys out here, and it's just so great because he loves riding bikes, and He's been waiting all winter long for this place to open up. The entire course is on a piece of property 100 metres by 100 metres. The land donated by the municipality of North Saanich. The park is operated by the Friends of North Saanich Mountain Bike Park Society. And it's a very healthy activity. I mean, you're out, you're riding a bike, uh, you're getting some fresh air, and you're really improving your skills, so everybody can get behind that sort of thing. The most recent donation is from the Sydney by the Sea Rotary Club. So that's the balance, 13000 <coughs> Wow. So, uh, Helping to offset the costs of building the final two sections of the park. This mogul style track called the Rotary Fitness Zone. That looks like a good leg workout. And then this expert course along the back of the park where the more experienced rider can catch a bit of air. Leaving you in the dust. Holy smokes, there's a rock. Now the jumps you see are designed and built by the riders themselves. And the pros share the track with beginners. Yeah, it's good. Everyone here is really friendly. It's like mountain biking and the whole community is like that. See your buddy all the way through. No! As you can see, it won't take long before the beginners turn into professionals around here. The park is open all summer, but you should check the website first in case there are any closure notices. Jump online to freeridebc.com. From North Saanich on Vancouver Island, I'm James Green for Big Summer. Big Summer is brought to you by Caltus Lake Water Park, BC's number one water park. Today we are celebrating the two-wheeling way of life, starting with free ride, BMX, and now just a little cruising. After the break, a new stretch of Valley Trail will soon connect Spring Creek with Chequemus Crossing. Well, it's uh, been a long process, but uh, we're optimistic that it'll be uh, open and uh, ready to ride on July 1st. This is Max. Like many bears, Max is curious. What he found was a bear buffet. One day, Max became brazen, trying to get an easy meal, and ended up in conflict with people. Max was in real danger. The good news is, by removing the attractant, you remove the bear and the problem. Let's teach bears to stay away, rather than inviting them to come and stay. Welcome back to the Express on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald. Pros and amateurs alike are competing here at the Sea to Sky Nationals. Many are local riders who mountain bike that like to use BMX as cross training. Well, it's that time in the show again for a road trip. Let's head up to Prince George, where we travel back in time to the days of the gold rush. Travel along with us on the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip as we explore the many marvelous attractions and activities of beautiful British Columbia. On today's Quality Assured Road Trip, we visit the historic Hubble Homestead located 40 kilometers north of Prince George. Hubble Homestead was built at the beginning of a shortcut over land used by settlers traveling north by water. The homestead saw a boom during the Amanika Gold Rush when prospectors were eager to find the fastest route to gold fields. 
Although the trail is no longer used, Hubble Homestead still bustles with activity. Volunteers keep history alive through tours of heritage buildings. Perhaps the most interesting building is Hubble House. It was built by Al Hubble and he started in January of 1912 and it, it took him the larger part of the year to complete it. It's the style of an Ontario farmhouse, so it's a little fancier than what you would find, especially at that time period in this area of Prince George. You'll notice that the house has a summer kitchen attached to it. So that's um, something that was a little different. This uh, log cabin is a representation of what Al lived in originally with his wife Annie um, and her daughter Ada. And then when the new baby was born, that was four people to a small cabin. And that was, I think, one of the big reasons why the large White House was built as well. They were planning to expand the family. So after that, this log cabin was turned into a kitchen. Hubble Homestead also boasts many other attractions. One building that is a must-see is the general store, which is still open for business. Hello. Hi. Um, there was 27 other families in the area, um, in addition to the Hubbles. So this store was used by them to buy items that they wouldn't normally be able to grow themselves. So that could include things like cheese or candy, stuff like that. Um, nails, I know, was a big one. <laughs> And um, I think at one point it actually also served as a post office as well. Whether visiting for the day or attending a special event, a trip to Hubble Homestead is sure to be a fun and historical learning experience. For Quality Assured Road Trip just north of Prince George, I'm Christina Dahl. Entertaining and informative, the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Weekends on Shaw TV. Always something new and exciting. We're witnessing a historical first here in Squamish, a national BMX race. There's lots of attractions here in the sea to sky. Just look for the trail with the yellow line. Later on in the show, what construction challenges does a trail network like this face? Don't forget to keep your dog on a leash when walking the valley trail. There's lots of people out there going fast, skateboarders, bikers, rollerbladers. Speed is definitely on course here at the Sea to Sky Nationals. Let's pay a trip to our Squamish SPCA and Wagon Whistler. Welcome to Wagon Whistler. These are a few of the pets that we have up for adoption. This is Indigo. She's a little six-week-old kitten that was found on the side of the road chasing, getting chased by a few dogs. So she ended up here because someone saved her. This is Mo. He's a really nice one-year-old dog. He'd do great with the family. He loves kids. Hi, welcome to the Squamish SPCA. We're just going to show you some of the cats that we have up for adoption right now. This here is Jazzy. She's one of our older females that we have up for adoption. She's probably around seven to eight years old. Very vocal, very friendly girl. Doesn't like the other cats too much, but she'd be good in a home with children. This here is Slinky. He is a five-year-old neutered male, Siamese cross. Um, he's a little shy, but he's very sweet once you get to know him. And he would be great with both cats and dogs, but Probably not with younger children. Love pets, love animals. The SBCA and WEG are always looking for volunteers to care for the Sea to Sky's cutest residents. Give the gift of time to your local animal shelters. You can volunteer by helping out with grooming or becoming a foster parent. Riders are locked and loaded here at the Start Gate. This brand new $25,000 gate was installed thanks to an Olympic Legacy Fund. The same gate is used on the World Cup and Olympic circuit. Our next structure wasn't a requirement, but it has become the heart and soul of Whistler. The Whistler Valley Trail Network, and it's not just for tourists. It's never a boring run, and the real beauty of it is it's all marked off. So if you want to run 10 kilometers, you know which points to turn around at and, and where to go. Running is just one way Whistlerite Ralph Forsyth enjoys using the Valley Trail Network. Locals have an intimate relationship with this 40 kilometer long yellow stripe, which weaves throughout Whistler, accessible via foot, skateboard, stroller or bike. The goal has always been to link all uh, neighborhoods, commercial centers, parks and schools 
as part of the Valley Trail Network. As well as people, anywhere from 800 to 1,200 daily. We'll see you later, have a great day. Okay, bye. It's a real way to get to know your community. And I think it's important to the social fabric of the community as well. We use it for transportation and getting to and from work. Uh, we use it uh, for recreation. So it, it touches all part of our lives. Commuting to work on her bike, this Chequemus Crossing neighborhood homeowner looks forward to the newest addition to the Valley Trail at the south end of town. It's going to actually shorten my commute even further. So we'll have really uh, direct access right through uh, from Chequemus into the village. So when do you think this project will be finished? Oh, well, it's uh, been a long process, but uh, we're optimistic that it'll be uh, open and uh, ready to ride on July 1st. A new 1,200,000 metre stretch of Valley Trail is under construction, linking the Spring Creek neighbourhood with Chequemus Crossing, the former athletes' village for the 2010 Winter Olympic Games. It's not cheap. If we were in the prairies and could, uh, you know, run it just across uh, flat ground, it would probably you know, it'll be a couple hundred thousand dollars a kilometer. But uh, as an example, uh, the 1,200 meter uh, trail from uh, Spring Creek to Chequemus Crossing uh, is costing over a million dollars. The certainly challenge is a very rocky country. We try to maintain a reasonable grade of no more than 5% so that uh, it can be fully accessible to, to people with mobility challenges. A gateway to paws and parks, activities and people. Whether a local or tourist, this number one rated summer attraction introduces onlookers to the real Whistler, not just the glossy brochure resort. If you think of Whistler and the village as the heart of Whistler, then the Valley Trail is really the arteries that keep that village pumping. And pedaling. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. The Whistler Valley Trail now connects with the Sea to Sky Trail, granting access to additional 180 kilometers of trails of riding. Well, it's fast and furious here at the Sea to Sky Nationals in Squamish. Other events worth checking out? The Express Spotlight fills you in. Celebrate cancer survivors and honor lives lost. The Squamish Relay for Life welcomes fundraising teams to a 12-hour non-competitive relay around the track at Brennan Park Recreation Centre. Register at cancer.ca slash relay. Celebrate National Multicultural Day in Whistler. Sample ethnic food kiosks, watch dance groups and performances, and listen to live African, Spanish and East Indian music. Araxi farms out a four-course menu at their 2011 Long Table Summer Series at North Arm Farm in Pemberton. Chef and farmer table an incredible local spread paired with wines. Looking to up your game for this year's Crankworks Mountain Bike Festival? The Whistler Mountain Bike Park now hosts a multifaceted race program led by regional and World Cup racers. Congratulations to the Squamish BMX Racing Club for putting on such an incredible event. The Sea to Sky is famous for mountain biking and now BMX is definitely on the map. And that wraps up this week's show. If you'd like to see your story ID on the Express, drop us a line at seatoskyexpress at shaw.ca. You can also get our show on the web at shawtv.com. Join us next week. We are decorating our bikes for the pre-Test of Metal event. So until then, from all of us on Shaw TV, thanks for watching. Nicole Fitzgerald wardrobe provided by Peak Performance. Hairstyling by The Loft Salon and makeup provided by Beauty Mark. POV camera, courtesy of Contour. While filming on the mountain, parking provided by the Fire Rock Lounge. Shaw has your district updates. It's a busy season for bears. Bear Aware reminds you to clean your outdoor barbecues, put away bird feeders, keep fruit trees picked, and of course, never feed a bear. Bear sightings in Squamish this week include Government Road, Timbertown, and the Eagle Run. Residents and businesses pledge to turn the key on their vehicles. The Whistler Idle Free program signed on 1,661 people who committed themselves to reducing idling. Know what's going on around your town? Squamish Council meetings take place on the first and third Tuesday of every month, starting at 6 p.m. at the Squamish Municipal Hall. You can also catch them right here on Shaw TV. Tune in Thursdays at 9 p.m. Whistler Council meetings also take place the first and third Tuesday of every month, starting at 5.30 p.m. at My Millennium Place in Whistler, 
Watch Council Saturday at noon here on Channel 4 as well. Hammerton Council meetings are held the first and third Tuesday of every month at Council Chambers located at 1350 Astor Street, just above the Fire Hall. The first Tuesday at 7 p.m., the second Tuesday at 9 a.m.